Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created to the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Roadshow. Turn up your mind. Well, I had an obligation as counsel to the president uh, to uh, to find out what was going on. And I'm, I'm so glad Judge Sullivan ordered the transcript because we now know the truth. And we also know that this this entire report by Mueller is a fraud. And we're going to find more of these things. Uh, Isn't it ironic that this man who kept indicting and prosecuting people for process crimes process crimes committed a false statement in his own report by by taking out half my words. They changed the Akai, the tenor and the contents of that conversation with Robert Kellner. And it's an outrage. Mm -hmm. And there's probably more of it. You know, add to this, Professor Dershowitz. Oh, no. That in and of itself is is an outrage because you're literally changing the exact meaning of what the counselor said. Number one. Number two, how embarrassing for Mueller last week to say, oh, I couldn't indict on obstruction because of a Department of Justice rule that that doesn't allow or questions the ability of uh, of him to to make a determination as it relates to whether you can can or cannot indict a sitting president. And then you look at the team that he put around him with Andrew Weissman and company, all chronicled in Sidney Powell's license to lie. Oh, please. And, Professor, you care about civil liberties. I care about civil liberties. This yeah, is, right. Every American needs to be concerned in all this. Got kids in a van. This is a very, very serious issue. The distortion of the doubt quote is very serious, <laughs> especially since remember that a report by a special counsel is always going to be one sided. Therefore, you have to trust it because the other side doesn't have a chance to look at it and show what's wrong with it the way it would in an adversarial situation. If a lawyer made a representation like that to a court and said, This is the quote and left out the crucial context, which showed, as John said, that what he discussed was not only absolutely proper, but obligatory for a counsel when you have a joint defense agreement to find out exactly what's likely to be used against your your client. What's likely to be used against you? You know, uh, these two people are such uh, world heavyweight champion cover-up artists for Donald Trump that it's just, it takes your breath away that they still do it. But this is what we're up against in this alternative universe. You're up against that, and then you got Janine Pirro. The reason that Robert Mueller spoke publicly this week is because he was more worried about his legacy than he was in protecting this country. Oh my God. This is counter to everything he was taught and supposedly stood for and is not only disappointing but politically damaging okay shut up janine really you're supposed to be a judge can you imagine having your case heard before that judge i mean she is so these people are so prone to distortion and lying and mismanagement of facts that it would i i don't even know how they pass the bar Honestly, I, I, I don't know how they pass the bar exam. I don't know how they pass the LSATs, which is nothing but managing facts. I, they are so willing to distort. Of course, they were, the, the Mueller report had the conversation between Dowd and Kellner. And obviously, Dowd was calling to dangle a pardon, to suborn perjury from Flynn. Telling him, you know, the president still loves Flynn and his feelings remain. So, you know, uh, and if there's anything he's going to testify to uh, that's going to, you know, implicate the president, we got a national security issue. So, you know, I need a heads up. That is what was in that transcript. The idea that we didn't understand what was in that transcript after reading the Mueller report is a lie. It's a lie. Now, here's the thing. You cannot, we cannot hold this president accountable by bringing contempt charges, criminal contempt charges against anybody. Okay, Bill Barr or uh, Annie Donaldson or Hope Hicks or Don McGahn or anybody who's in defiance of a subpoena 
as of today, okay? You can't do it because even after the House votes on, on Tuesday to hold them in contempt, which is a process that they need to do before it's referred to a U.S. attorney, and then the U.S. attorney takes that referral and convenes a grand jury. You know how long that would take? Do you, do you have any idea? So that's not going to work. That's number one. Number two, civil contempt. It's never been tried before. So whatever a judge says, the losing party is going to appeal it. That would go to the next level and then all the way up to the spring. Listen, that, that, you wouldn't get an answer until the October before the November election. That's how long that would take. So that's not going to work. So what will work? Inherent contempt. We used to do it all the time. Here's what it is. And this is what the Supreme Court has said it is. Congress has, because of Article I of the Constitution, which assigns Congress its duties, it has oversight and investigative powers. Inherent within those powers is the, is the issuance of subpoenas. That's why they can issue a subpoena in the first place. The Supreme Court has said that in order for Congress to be effective in its constitutionally prescribed oversight and investigative uh, powers that it has, in order to be effective, they have the ability to compel the production of information and testimony from witnesses. It has the right to compel compliance with its orders. Now, the ability to punish people who do not comply with congressional orders, congressional subpoenas, is a necessity for Congress to execute its legislative functions, including investigations, which is a legitimate legislative purpose impeachment itself because you're going to hear a lot about what legislative purpose does it serve impeachment itself is a legislative purpose under inherent contempt authority what the house can do is begin a trial of its own it doesn't have to be an impeachment trial, which the sole power of an impeachment trial resides in the Senate, as we all know. But the House also has the power to have a trial. Who would they try? They would try whoever is in contempt of their subpoena. They could try whoever is in contempt for contempt, and they can do it before the entire chamber of the House. It used to be fairly common. This happens. It used to happen a lot. It hasn't happened in 75 years, and it needs to happen now. It is the only, you know, I've been racking my brain, reading every legal opinion, every scholar, listening to everybody from, you know, Dershowitz to... Uh, to, 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 to John, uh, Jonathan Turley, who is more of a libertarian, uh, but a friend of ours. I, I've talked to him for years and years, all the way to, uh, you know, Benjamin Wittes and, uh, you know, on up to Eric Holder, the former attorney general. And I am telling you, the only thing that will work for this House of Representatives is to convene its own trial for the people who are in contempt of their congressional subpoenas so that means don mcgahn hope hicks annie donaldson okay they have to call lewandowski they have to call steve bannon they have to call john kelly they have to call this nader dude okay they have to call this george nader pedophile i don't you know I, to make a deal with a pedophile is just nauseating but they shouldn't have to even enter into an immunity agreement with him to get his testimony they could try him in the house for contempt if he fails to appear after a subpoena. Also, Rick Gates, Paul Manafort's partner, he entered into a, a plea agreement. You know who else? Elliot Briotti, the guy that paid off the mistress, uh, you know, uh, because he was part of that Seychelles meeting that George Nader, uh, 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 you know, uh, arranged for Eric Prince. And Eric Prince has to be subpoenaed. 
Tillerson, who was the Secretary of State that Briody wanted fired because he wanted contracts from the UAE, and Tillerson was against it because of the blockade, right? Uh, McMaster has to be called. All these people have to be called, and if they defy congressional subpoenas, the House must have a trial for contempt. And that includes bringing witnesses, that includes using Mueller's report, his own report, their own testimony to Mueller to defeat any claims of executive privilege, to defeat any claims of immunity, to defeat... And that is the only answer I can find. And again, I'm telling you, I have a law degree, but it's an honorary law degree. It did not go to law school. But after everything that I have looked into, civil contempt will not work. Criminal contempt will not work. The only thing that will work is Congress's right, their inherent contempt powers to hold a trial for those who are in contempt. That's where I'm at. That's all I can come up with. If you got a better idea, I'd love to know about it. Andyroads.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.